Surviving in the world of Resident Evil has never been more challenging than in the brand new remake of Resident Evil 4. But don't worry because I've got you covered with the top 10 tips and tricks you need to know to survive the horrors of this updated classic. So grab your weapons, load your ammo, and get ready for a journey through the deadliest version of Resident Evil yet. First, we're upping our survival game because the Resident Evil 4 remake introduces a game-changing move that will make you feel like a real badass, the parry. Parry is a well-timed counter that redirects an attack away from you. And all you have to do is press the left bumper or L1 on a controller or the spacebar on a keyboard right before an enemy attacks you to parry their attack. You can use it on most attacks from regular enemies, including even the Chainsaw Man in the village and the Plagas from the monks inside the castle. Trust me, when the undead are closing in, the parry move is not just a lifesaver, it's a heart-pounding game changer. Next, for all you original Resident Evil 4 fans out there, they brought back a classic, the Roundhouse Kick. It's quick, easy, and perfect for clearing out a crowd in a pinch. Shoot or stab an enemy right in its ugly face to stun it, then run in close for the ultimate moment of glory. As you get close, a prompt will show up on your screen just begging you to unleash that bone-crushing roundhouse kick. And when you do, you'll send these crazy undead cultists flying. Master this and you'll even save some ammo. Next comes one of Leon's most epic moves, the suplex. I've seen a lot of people saying that you need to get to the castle area before you can do this, but you can actually do it to any regular human enemy any time in the game. To perform a suplex, shoot an enemy below the knee so that they fall to their knees. Then get behind them and press the action button. Notice that the monks in the castle section will fall to their knees with their backs to you, making it much easier to suplex them. If you don't make it behind them, it's still cool because Leon will do a Spartan kick to their chest instead. You get a suplex, you get a suplex, you get a suplex. Suplex City! Not sure if you can tell, but this is definitely my favorite move. Next, let's talk about merchant requests. That's right, not only does a sketchy guy in a trench coat refuse to help you kill off the crazy cultist, he also has requests. Pinned on the wall throughout the game, you'll find bright blue notes from the merchant outlining specific requests. If you complete a request, the merchant will give you spinels that you can then trade for special items. Definitely don't pass up on these requests because some of the special items include weapons and really useful accessories. Prepare to put your shooting skills to the test and reap some awesome rewards because the shooting range is making a return from the original Resident Evil 4. First available in Chapter 3, the shooting range has four locations scattered throughout the game. And you can find them by looking for an elevator near the merchant or looking for the shooting range icon on your map. Depending on the score you get from one of the challenges, you get silver or gold coins. The coins can then be inserted into a coin machine like this one in exchange for a random charm. Then you can attach those charms to your case at a typewriter to get different bonuses like a 15% submachine gun ammo craft bonus or even an increase to Leon's running speed. One important thing to note is that while the charm is random, it actually is based on a tier. For example, inserting all silver coins will get you the random charm from the lowest tier, while inserting all gold coins will get you a random charm from the highest tier. Order of coins doesn't matter. It also won't give you the same charm twice, so you don't have to worry about that. As you're breaking barrels, boxes, and vases with the same appetite for destruction of property as Link when he goes into any unsuspecting person's house in any Legend of Zelda, Sometimes, a box will lead to a fun and unexpected surprise in the form of a vicious, slithering viper. If this happens, quickly take out your knife and kill it. It will heal your wounds as much as a green herb, and you can fulfill one of the merchant requests in Chapter 3 by collecting and selling three vipers. You can also find vipers randomly near or in the water. The fish farm area, for example, definitely has a bunch of vipers in the water if you want to stock up on some. Just watch the water for movement, and listen for any hissing noises. I'd recommend cleaning out the enemies first though. Speaking of the fish farm, that place is like recovery central. It's not just the best place to catch vipers, but it's also pretty good for catching fish. Fish have different sizes, but even the smaller ones heal you as much as a green herb. So as you're going through the game, if you see a place with water, it's pretty likely it'll have fish for you to catch. Just like with the vipers, watch the water for movement and you're bound to see some fish. In the village section, you can also stock up on fish from the lake. 
Just make sure to not randomly shoot four times into the lake before defeating the lake boss. Or do, if you want a fun surprise. Listen up y'all, if you're not buying the treasure maps in Resident Evil 4, you're missing out on the mother load of loot. You can find all the treasure yourself, but the world of Resident Evil 4 is much bigger now than it was in the original, and having these show up on your map directly will make a world of difference. It'll lead you straight to the blue medallions and any other treasures that will make you rich. So grab those maps ASAP and reap the rewards. And that brings us to treasures. One of the biggest mistakes you can make is selling off your jewels and treasures one by one like a chump. Instead, as you collect treasures throughout the game, keep an eye out for ones with slots in them, because if you insert the right jewels into those slots, you can sell those treasures for a lot more than some of their parts. You'll even get bonuses depending on which jewels you insert into the treasures. For example, using two of the same color gem will give you a 1.2 times bonus, and using four of the same color on a treasure will give you a 1.7 times bonus. So be patient and you'll be selling those bad boys for top dollar, or should I say pesetas, in no time. Lastly, as you continue on through Resident Evil 4, you'll fight lots of freaky ganados with the virus sprouting outside of their bodies. The plagas are weak to bright lights, so a flash grenade will instantly kill them. Be careful though, I would try to save at least one grenade for those extra tough times when you're facing a whole horde of these nasties. A bonus here is that you can buy a crafting recipe from the merchant so that you can craft them later yourself. Now you're finally ready to lay the smack down on every last enemy in Resident Evil 4 while eating your vipers and selling your treasures to a sketchy guy in a trench coat. And I'm out. Let me know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video.